I was just in my own adventure story, and like every hero, I encountered a small problem. That, of course, was Patrick Stewart dramatically reenacting the Jade Rabbit Lunar Lander's final words. But it's just a moon rover, so why do we cry? But quoi? China's Chang'e 3 robotic probe reached the lunar surface on December 14, 2013, landing in the Sea of Ruins. In this, China became only the third nation in history to achieve a soft lunar landing. Hours later, Chang'e 3 deployed a lunar rover to investigate this haunting environment, a lunar rover named Jade Rabbit. To provide you a little background here, the probe's name, Chang'e, comes from that of the Chinese moon goddess, and the Jade Rabbit appears in Chinese folklore as a magical rabbit that lives on the moon. It happens all the time. We name our vehicles and robots after animals and humans in order to give them greater emotional resonance. Everyone does it, but we weren't prepared for what happened next. Jade Rabbit experienced a mechanical control abnormality, and soon the rover's Chinese social media account sent out the following heartfelt goodbye. Some parts of my body won't listen to their commands. Now my masters are hard at work thinking of ways to fix me. Even so, I know that it's possible I won't be able to endure this night. The sun here has fallen, and the temperature is dropping fast. I've said a lot today but I still feel it's not enough. I'll tell everyone a little secret. I'm actually not that sad. I'm just in my own adventure story, and like any protagonist, I encountered a bit of a problem. Good night, Earth. Good night, humans. And then we all break down and cry. Seriously, if that doesn't tug at your heartstrings a little bit, then you're probably the robot. But why does it hurt? It comes down to a little something called personification or anthropomorphism. Humans are great at this. We simply apply human characteristics to non-human entities. Everything from fighter planes to hurricanes and earthquakes. This talent factors into our oldest storytelling traditions and our earliest attempts to understand the universe around us. Jade Rabbit is a fantastic example because we find ourselves tearing up over the imagined death of a robotic probe that we've rebranded as a magical rabbit. We're not even pretending it's a real rabbit. In essence, we're pretending it's a human being. Pet owners do this every day, translating animal behavior like a dog's submissive posture into, oh, he's sorry he made a mess. But he's not sorry. Only humans feel sorry. It just feels like our dog is sorry inside of our amazing personifying minds. Personification can be dangerous, however. For starters, it's considered a dire sin in the scientific community since anthropomorphic language can attribute reason and intent to animals and forces effectively derailing objective thought. And it can affect the way that we behave, transforming simple everyday realities into hated adversaries to be raged at. For example, a 2013 study from the University of South Carolina looked at how consumers respond to wait times for products. They found that when consumers assigned human characteristics to time, they found it far more difficult to wait, especially if the individual felt powerless in their day-to-day -day life. It's an example of time anthropomorphism, just another instance where we turn a benign force into an enemy out to get us. We turn simple truths into a soap opera, a powerful enough tool to raise public support for a lunar mission, or to make a person flip out in a waiting room. So what about you? Do you have any negative examples of personification in your life? Have you ever stubbed your toe and then cussed out the offending coffee table? What about positive ones? Have you ever named your car? Has your dog ever done something and looked proud of itself? Let us know in the comments below, and to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.